Okay, great. So today's session of GitLab University um, is about our, our new flow, um, really talking about our vision. So you all heard Sid um, at our our team summit talk about you know how our goals are helping customers move faster from idea to production he did a session and a team call about two weeks ago talking about what this future state looks like and we're actually working to adjust our marketing on our home page um, and then i'll be making changes to our pitch deck as well and so like all of our messaging um, is moving towards this goal of explaining to customers how we're building an integrated solution that will allow them to move faster from idea to production so I asked Mark um, to join the session today because um, he's the one who's like been working on this most closely, putting together what the user experience demo flow um, and existing demo looks like. And so I thought it would be really great for Mark to explain, look, well, give us a demo in this session as well, allow us to offer him any feedback of like what questions we anticipate customers may ask, um, and then I think this will sort of be an ongoing conversation, so we should really view this as a starting point, but I felt like it would be really great to hear from Mark, um, and then also it would be great for, from, for Mark to hear from us about just like some existing questions we have. So hopefully you had a chance to look at the video that Mark already put out on YouTube um, and maybe just skim through his uh, script, but if not, no worries, he's gonna deliver the demo for us again today. Um, and then honestly, this should be like a, a real conversational session. I think most of the time is gonna be spent um, in the question and answers, answers portion. So don't be shy in asking questions. Um, I think with that, Mark, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thanks, Amara. Um, <clears throat> yeah, actually just one slight twist. Rather than just giving the demo, I thought I'd actually give a little bit of space around it uh, to sort of teach you guys how to give the demo if you want to do it yourselves. And I don't expect all of you to want to do this, um, but maybe a couple of you people will. Um, I don't know, so I can see Reb on the call. Uh, no, I don't. Um, he's been through this, but he hasn't actually practiced it or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's part of the context here is maybe you know to give a little bit of ability for you guys to give the demo yourself. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to show you all the prep that I go through. And um, this isn't what I would show the customer. But obviously, if you want to see the polished demo, you can go look at the video, and that is the final thing. And it's a real-time demo, so there's no cutting and pasting to make that um, that demo actually work. Um, but so what I'm going to do, so actually, there's a couple of setup things that I do first off, just so you can see. First thing I do is actually load up the demo script on um, an iPad for me. Um, and I keep it next to my computer. Actually, I put it on my screen, so I'm reading from that uh, script. The reason I do that is, at least with my screen, it's not wide enough to show the demo, um, the actual like demo page, the issues and whatnot, and the script at the same time without like clicking back and forth. And I don't want people to see that I'm clicking and doing weird stuff. So I actually have the iPad totally separate. Just works for me. If you've got a bigger screen, maybe it totally is not an issue. Um, but for me, that works. Um, and so then I'm actually going to go, let me see. I'm going to share my screen right now just so you can see my full screen, which is not what I would do with a customer. Uh, this is such a weird interface. I can't tell if I'm actually sharing now. <laughs> um, and somebody, I can't. Yeah, you are sharing. Mark. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So uh, the first thing I would do is actually open up a new window, um, and I have the demo bookmarked, and then I will minimize the other windows, get them out of the way. And then actually, while I'm there, I'm also going to turn off or turn on Do Not Disturb so I don't get any other alerts. Usually when I'm actually um, giving the demo, I would just share one screen. So even if I did get any alerts, they wouldn't see it, but it can be a distraction if nothing else. Um, so, so this is the, the demo script. It's linked from the issue that was sent out. Um, it's in the sales handbook. All this stuff is, is public, um, which is actually great. I've already linked to it for a few other people because they asked me like, oh, how do you do all this? I'm like, well, here's this script that does exactly all that. Um, so in that, um, down here in the actual demo, there's the per demo setup. And this is what I wanted to show, again, that I wouldn't show a customer, um, but I will show you guys. So the first step is then to open up the project. Again, I'll open up that in a new window. This is the main thing that I will be focusing on with the customer. 
with that in mind, I'm going to shrink down some of these things. I said I have the iPad on um, for the actual script, but in case something goes wrong, it's this is there as well. One other trick I do um, is I use a, a Divi, um, which is this. Uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, but basically take I can take a window and then resize it to a specific given size. Um, I have a hotkey set up to resize it to what I consider to be a good demo size. Um, actually, it's slightly too small for this demo. I'm going to make this, I guess, a little bit bigger because I need to be able to get click on those uh, production buttons. Um, the reason I do this is that when I share the screen, I don't have to zoom in because, like, right now, as you probably can't even read this text because you're looking at a tiny little thing in blue jeans. Um, so make a smaller screen so that people actually can see more detail. Um, it's a little thing, but it helps the demo go well. Um, okay, so with that in mind, I'm actually going to go back to blue jeans and stop sharing that. Or maybe I can say, I don't know if you can hear, I'll just pick Chrome to share. Oh, I still can't pick a window, is it? You're still seeing probably my whole screen, aren't you? If I do this, does that help? Yes. Yeah. Um, so now are you just seeing one window? Only seeing one window. It's still a small corner, though. It it's is in the like, top left. Uh, let me just stop this and start it again and see what happens. Doing Hangouts, it's much better by just grabbing one window instead of the whole thing. Um, OK, that's not really doing it at all, is it? Mark? No, um, it's the same. Yeah. From, from years and years of demo experience, it's always best to just maximize the window that you're showing people. Just maximize it. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it gets complicated because then you maximize it and you got to like bump up the font size and then things start to get distorted. But I will do that um, for this. But normally if I'm doing Hangouts, this works better. Um, you know, even even having a weird font size, it's better to have it maximized than to have distractions for the other pieces of the screen or pieces of the screen that may be blank or, or, right. or other stuff. It's, it's, it's better from a viewer's standpoint. All right, so I'm going to bump this up. Um, how does that look at this point? It actually looks really, really good. Yeah, that's great. Right, great. Um, okay, cool. Um, all right, so there is actually one more step of the pre uh, preparation to do, be done, is which is to, well, two steps actually, creating an issue and creating a merge request. Um, I've created a little template here, so you just click on it and actually will fill in all of the issue information for you. Um, So just submit that, and then now follow through. Let me pull out this window up there. So you can actually, sorry, again, this is prep. I wouldn't show the customer. Um, so here are the instructions then to actually go through and create the first merge request in a very specific way so that the everything is set up properly. Again, this is a tiny little change just to kick off a merge request. Oh, yeah. And for some reason, we lost the ability. It would normally link right there and just let me create a merge request directly. Um, I think we have a regression. So I noticed that we lost that, too. Yeah. Um, normally, there would be a link right there, which makes it a little bit easier, um, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, so that's done. Um, pull back up 
that and I'm going to close this one. Now, just to make sure everything's perfect, I'm going to refresh this page so that the issue counts and the merge request count show up properly there. Okay, so now we're ready to give the demo. Um, again, not a lot of stuff there, but just good to go through. Um, all right, let's see if I can still do this, covering up a little bit of the screen. Okay, great. So today I'd like to get demo some of the power of GitLab's integrated set of tools for the software development lifecycle, helping you get from idea to production as quickly as possible. We'll start with a simple project and show you the power of built-in continuous integration, built-in container registry, and built-in continuous deployment. Um, just because of meta context here, there's more to the idea to production workflow than those three topics. But those three topics are the new things that we are demoing, and they really show an integrated flow that nobody else has, um, and uh, and whatever. So it's a, it's a nice polished piece. But idea to production, of course, goes farther than just creating an issue. It goes to chatting about the issue um, and all that kind of stuff too. So um, this demo will evolve. Um, Sid's already given you a slideware demo at one of the team calls. Um, which, by the way, has been recorded. So if you haven't seen that, you should definitely take a look at that. And I think, Amara, you're going to put a, I don't know if you found a link to that yet, but um, if you do find a link, put that up on the issue, maybe so people can follow up later. Um, but also, uh, really soon, hopefully, we'll have a new version of this demo that covers the whole space of this. But for now, we're focusing on those three things. Um, great. So here uh, on the screen, I'm showing a simple Ruby application. It's based on the Sinatra framework. And if we click here, we go to the production site. We can see that it's it's just a single page, um, just a little graphic, not much to it. I'll actually bump the font a little bit here too. Now, as a developer, I'll go look at the issue tracker to look for work. You know, what's what's on my agenda to work on? I see that there's one issue here. I'll click through. And I see that it's just asking to update some, update some text. Really not a big deal. Um, but I see that there's already a merge request related to it. So I'll click through on that. And here we can see the merge request, but we can also see exactly what has changed. This is the file. Um, you know, the diff is obviously just one little word. Um, not really a big deal. Um, but also, you know, that's one thing to, to look at the, the file changes. And, and for that matter, I can go here and comment on that. Um, I can go back and forth. If there was a discussion, it would all show up here. The whole team could be collaborating on that. Again, looking at the, the code changes is one thing. But I really want to see what this looks like live. Imagine it was a CSS change or something that's really hard to interpret just by looking at code. So there's this staging environment here where I can see the change live. And that's a really great thing to see because um, now I know exactly how that's changed. Um, now, in this case, I can see, OK, it's running, but I'm not really happy with that. It still just says welcome. I want to go make another change. So let's go back to that merge request. Change again. And then I'm just going to go ahead and edit right here. Make a really simple change again. I'm going to commit that. And now we can see that it's actually kicked off a bunch of automated processes to test and build um, and, and ultimately deploy those changes. So we can see here that it started running the test. We'll actually click through. And we can see it, you know, it's doing a bundle install. Again, it's a, it's a Ruby app. Um, and then it ran our spec just to see if the, um, you know, if if anything, if I broke anything with my change. Um, the spec is now finished, uh, our spec is now finished, and it's moved on to building. And you see here it's building actually a Docker container to house all of the this files and whatever that I need to make this application run. But building a Docker container can take a little while. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to go take a look at the container registry. And here we can see a bunch of images, Docker images, that have already been created for this project. 
Um, there's been quite a few so far. Uh, there are a couple of special ones, uh, a couple of special tags, one for staging and one for production. And we'll get back to those a little bit later. Now let's get back to a merge request and see how it's coming. All right, the build has now finished and it's moved on to the deploy stage. Now here it's taking that Docker image that was already uh, built and it's uh, and has been pushed up to the container registry. And now it's pulling them down from the container registry and then now it's going to push it up to Docker Cloud. Um, actually what it's doing is configuring Docker Cloud to pull it from the container registry directly. Um, but it's telling it to then push that up into the staging cloud. So just give it another minute here. Push is in progress. And now it's finished. Great. And it's all been pushed up to staging. Now to go see that, I'll go back to this staging URL. And I see that, in fact, the staging app has been updated with my new change. And now this is great because it, you know, not only can I see that, but any other reviewer can go see that or like a product manager or somebody else that wouldn't want to be running the code locally to see the changes can go and see it. Now let's go back. We saw the things from the merge request perspective, but I'm going to look at the, the pipelines page here for the project. And I can actually see every run of CI that has been made so far. And this is a great view to see the history of changes, but also to see really quickly if something were to fail, see if I can scroll down far enough to see a failure. There's one. So this one failed in the deploy phase itself. Um, and there's probably, probably have to go to the second page before I see other failures. Um, yeah, this one had an invalid um, configuration file, and this one failed in the test. If something went wrong, the test failed. Um, so this is a really great uh, view just to see really quickly, you know, what stage something uh, went wrong or how far it went. You know, yes, this has been deployed, that kind of thing. I'm going to go back to this, uh, another tab here called the environments tab, where I can actually see the status of staging and production. I can see here that staging has been updated. It's, it's got the branch that I had, I've been using in the merge request. It was updated about a minute ago, but production is still 15 days old. Uh, and it's running a different SHA from different branch, everything, um, different commit message. So it's definitely running something different. <clears throat> but since we just looked at our change and we we're happy with that, let's go ahead and actually ship that to production. Going back to the merge request. Click accept merge request. Great, now that's done. We'll go back to the pipelines here. And we can see that it's kicked off yet another build of the pipeline. And this is to make sure that the changes we just made still work. Um, you know, in case somebody else has merged something into master since then, you never know. Uh, the merge uh, you know, might conflict in some way that wasn't covered by the test. So in this case, it's running uh, on master one more time. And you know, we could go ahead and follow along the same way. Our tests have already finished. It's back into the building phase. Um, while we're waiting, actually, let's go take a look at the environments one more time. And here I'm going to click through on the production environment. Now I can actually see a history, again, of everything that has been deployed to production. Uh, now this is really great because I can you know see the Git shots, but I can also see the messages. Oh, this was you know merge request seven. This is merge request six, etc. But I can also see the dates that things changed. So if anything happens in production, you know somebody somebody reports a bug that happened on Monday or something they saw, you can look back and see. Oh, you know well that's you know, maybe we changed something on Monday. Um, or if you know you're looking at production metrics and you see that in the last two days everything started to get slower or there's been a whole bunch of errors or whatever this can help you track it back to well, what actually changed in production. Um, and especially since that's not necessarily when a merge request was merged, because you know people can push things to production at different times, uh, it's really great to be able to track that down. Um, another great feature from here is over on the, uh, the, the last column. 
if something did happen in production and you don't want to wait around for a developer to make a patch and submit that and then test it again and all that kind of things, like let's say it's a really bad broken build, you could easily just really quickly click on rollback and it would just go back to the last known, you know, good version. Potentially you can go back, you know, five days, maybe you don't get back to the last one, but you know, depending on how quickly you notice that there's a problem, you could just roll back. And that really, really helps in an emergency um, is it buys you time to deal with, you know, whatever the fix is properly. All right, so um, let's go back. I think our last change should pretty much be deployed by now. Um, yep, it's passed. Uh, it's been deployed. So let's go check the environments one more time, actually, just to make sure. Yep, less than a minute ago, production environment has been updated. and. Uh, just go and verify on the production site itself. Yep, there it's changed. And then the last thing, just to close the loop, go back to the registry. And we can see that the production tag has been updated as of two minutes ago. Staging was also updated as well. Um, so everything's in sync. Uh, the production tag is on the registry. The environment shows what's been deployed. The actual app is running, of course. So that's it, end-to-end um, -end, um, covering CI, CD, and the container registry. So any questions on the demo part so far before I jump back into other meta things? I'll stop the screen sharing. I can see if there's chat. I guess there's not. No questions? Have everybody seen the demo so far? And so is this old news at this point? Or is everybody just tired? All right, good. Um, all right, well, I know, Amara, you had a, a few um, prefab questions you wanted me to answer. Um, so maybe we should just start with some of that stuff. Yeah, so um, I put just one question, which then I guess spawned a series of questions. Um, in the issue but essentially one of the things i thought would be helpful for everyone to understand is like more information on what current like what a what the current development workflow would be so i think a lot of the things that you talk about are replacing um possibly some of the existing tools um that developers are using today and so i was hoping you could explain more about um what they may be using um and how we are going to replace those? Sure, so um, for I'll answer that in two parts. One is for the scope of this particular demo I just showed, and then one for the broader vision. Um, so for the what we just showed, you know, we showed CI, CD, and container registry. So if you were on a competitive you know, GitHub or something, um, it doesn't offer any of those three things. So you'd actually have to have some other provider for CI. Possibly CD would be the same provider, but like, you know, if you're using Travis or Circle, um, their CD solutions aren't really great or polished yet. So you might end up having some other solution for the CD side of it. And then the container registry, you'd probably be using Docker Hub, or if you know, depending on where you're deploying, you'd use a container registry on that thing. So Amazon and Google both have container registries themselves, and so you'd be integrating with one of those things. Um, so the main difference here is that it's, it's all in one, and from a cost perspective, it's all in one. Um, but also from a tightness of integration, it's all in one. I mean, if you go to GitHub and look at your project, there's no interface to see what's running in staging um, or you know what images have been produced. Like there's no single UI that would do any of those things. Um, GitLab is, as far as I'm aware, the only provider that show, that has that all in one interface. Um, and that can range from just being a slight inconvenience, you know, because you could click through on a build and then it takes you to another page, to um, really missing out on some really great value. Um, you know, for example, when I look at a merge request, I could look at that view and then from there click a button. Um, this wasn't demonstrated, but a new feature we just shipped is manual actions. I can click on a button and said then deploy to production. And because that's integrated in one view, it's much more likely that somebody's going to make use of that. Whereas there's no way to do that in GitHub. You'd have to then, I don't know, click through the build and then on some other interface, then navigate to where the deployments are. Um, I, I mean, especially if you're using Travis or um, CircleCI, there just wouldn't be. You'd have to go to some other interface. Um, you'd go to, um, I don't even know what you'd go to. Uh, 
you know, you pull up Ansible or something like that and, you know, check the status of things. So, um, so this replaces a bunch of pieces there. Um, and then of course integrates them in a much, much better way. In a so, so Mark, of, oh, yeah. Sorry, Mark, can I ask a quick question on that front sort of related to that? Um, obviously, you know, the sales team, haven't very much if at all any experience of any of the other systems so if we're giving this that demo that we've just done would uh developers sort of go wow that's fantastic or would they go you know okay i get it yeah great because at that point we have to go off and uh, look at rci tool or what, what i mean it'd be great to sort of have a comparison of what the interface looks like versus what it you know, the worst case scenario is with, with it, every other um, separate tool, if that makes sense. So if you could sort of shed a bit of light on that, it'd be great. Sure. Um, actually, one thing I, I should probably point out is that while CI is pretty common um, and container registries, you know, they, Docker Hub, whatever, that they exist, CD itself is actually something that most of the developers won't even have. Um, and they certainly won't have it in a nice uh, interface or anything like that. So on the one hand, I can talk about what it would look like if you had that product, but I think what's also really cool is that a lot of the people you're gonna show this to, this is totally new ground for them. They've never had automatic deploys based on a merge request. They've never had an interface that shows them what's running in production versus a staging and things like that. This is a relatively new trend um, you know, certainly the, the really modern teams will have it, and you know, Heroku has stuff like this, and you know some of our competitors. But like, it, it's all small um, competitors that have it. Like, none of the big guys really have a great answer there. Um, Jenkins maybe has some things, but it just doesn't look the same or isn't nearly as integrated or whatever. Um, so anyway, so that's the first thing for me is that CD is just this really awesome thing that I believe in personally, really strongly. Um, as a developer, as as former development management, um, things like that, I really think that this streams line stuff. Um, so I think, you know, part of this wow factor would be having the customer see CD for the first time um, or see CD done well for the first time. But going back to it, um, most people will have some familiarity. Hopefully the folks you're talking to probably more have Jenkins than Travis and um, Circle. Travis and Circle don't, well, Circle does have an on-premise solution, but um, they're more known for their SaaS. Um, but Jenkins is obviously the on-premises thing, and that's the stuff we're fighting against most, so to speak. Um, however, so I think one of the reactions you'll see is anybody who's used Jenkins is like, wow, this is so much easier to use. Like that's probably the biggest thing you're gonna see. Um, and then if you you know if you compare it to the Travis or Circle, uh, it's not necessarily gonna look better. I mean, those guys have reasonable interfaces, um, but it's just that the level of integration is so much better. Um, you know. Uh, when I used to work at Circle, one of the challenges was um, sort of getting the eyeball on the Circle interface as opposed to the GitHub interface, because that's GitHub is where you're doing your development, and then having to link off somewhere else uh, means a lot of times people just don't bother, and so you can invest a lot in your interface, but like a lot of people aren't going to see it. In our case, again, um, because we've got this deep integration, we can show you all the the information right there. Um, so. Sorry, one more point on that. Like in that pipeline view that I showed, where it showed the stages, that's something that's nearly impossible with um, most integrations on on GitHub. They just have one little checkbox that says yes, CI passed. You don't know anything else about it. You don't know, or it failed. You wouldn't know what stage it failed on. Um, you wouldn't be able to then click through and just see the build log. That would all be linked to offsite. Does that actually answer your question? I feel like there was some part of it that I didn't yet answer. So feel free to ask it again. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, it definitely helps. I think um, in my experience, when salespeople are giving demos, we're, because we're inexperienced of using the tools, we tend to focus on the, the wrong areas. Um, so it's important for us to make sure that we focus on, and I, I call them sort of wow moments, that, you know, the things that they weren't have been used to seeing elsewhere. So the things that we need to concentrate on and highlight to them when we're giving the demos rather than, the normal stuff that they'll go, yeah, 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 get, you know, I've seen that, Richard, carry on, carry on, you know, that's where we need to get better at. Yeah, so um, this won't be complete, but some of the things to highlight, the, the container registry piece, um, I kind of gloss over it a little bit because, you know, it's just such a simple function. 
in some ways. Um, but the integration is actually really, uh, really interesting. Um, and I obviously didn't show any of this in the demo, but one of the coolest things about the container registry is there's just zero configuration. Um, you just push up an image. I don't have to create a project. I don't have to set permissions. I don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. Any other solution you would use, you'd maintain the container registry as you know its own system. I'd have to add and remove users. I'd have to create tokens and share them and put them into secrets and all this kind of stuff. And for us, it's just totally automatic. Um, and then you know the bonus of being able to say, all right, now I can actually just look at the images and everything from the project. That seems like a very surface thing, but as a developer, the idea that I just don't have to worry about this, it's there. Um, it's really, um, really something that only we can do, basically, um, or at least that only we have done. So that's one great thing to sort of highlight to a development team specifically. Um, I feel like I covered most of the other stuff. The CI CD stuff is a little bit, um, well, again, it's more about the visual integration. Um, CD, again, it is just sort of all new world. So everything there is going to be more new to a developer team. So I don't know, for me, I think all this stuff is really, really great and easy to do. What I didn't cover is like how our CI solution actually differs really in any substantive way from our competition or how it's easier to use. I kind of just totally glossed over all that and, and said, hey, look, you know, watch the buttons and it's just really easy. Um, but as a developer, there's probably a lot more that we can dig in there and tell people about why our CI solution is actually really good. Um, and there's probably a lot, that's probably a whole topic all on its own, frankly. Um, happy to delve in more, um, but I feel like we could get lost on that for a while. Right, thanks, Mark. It's really helpful. All right, and I think Amara, as in moderator, asked about, um, can you explain how it'd be easy to use versus Jenkins? So again, that's a, a big topic. Um, and I, disclaimer here for us, I don't use Jenkins personally, so a lot of this is hearsay. Um, I think there's an issue that covers a lot of the, the topics we've already had, and we should probably, you know, again, turn that into a web page somewhere. Um, but at this point, from the context of when you give this demo to a team, what's going to wow them? It's it's most about the visual interface. Like Jenkins just looks painful. It's hard to use, whatever. Um, it's configured by administrators, not by the end developer. I didn't demo how to configure any CI, so that won't show up in this demo. Um, but if you were to do it, it'd be really, it's really impressive. It's like, oh yeah, as a developer, I have full control. If I want to use a different stack, if I want to load up different modules, if I want to add new things and remove things, whatever, I have full control. Whereas most of the time you have to be a, you know, a, a Jenkins PhD to actually figure that stuff out and have the keys to do so. As a developer, you wouldn't. So that's one of the key things. There's probably three other key things. Um, but again, that's probably another topic um, not covered by this demo. And not specifically about idea of production either. That's just about CI itself. Um, GitHub integrations would, uh, Sorry, you mentioned the GitHub integrations would not tell you anything more than passed or failed. Is that information pa packed in another system? How often do you need to go and check on it? I'm wondering what the time or headache savings are from not having to switch. So that's slightly tough to answer because um, in one common flow, if you're using Circle CI or whatever, you look at a merge request, you'll see a check mark, you'll see an X, and you'll click on a link, and then it would take you to Circle CI's interface, and you would see everything there. Um, but realistically, what would actually happen is you would have gotten an email with the failure and it would have included everything there. A lot of folks will just use that email flow and never use the web interface. So from that perspective, um, there's not much different there. They have all the information they need to go and, and get it. What's interesting, I think, is more when you look at some of the meta stuff, like as a manager or something, and I just want to look at the health of my system and I just want to get a feel for like, is this project doing well? How many times does master get broken and then we fix it later as opposed to fixing it during the merge request or before the merge request? Um, and that's where I think our visualization helps. It steps in one level deeper. It shows you the stages. It gives you some sense for you know things at a higher level. Um, so it's not really that we've made something in that particular sense. It's not that that integration um, allowed something that couldn't happen, it's just to put it on one page. Um, where the other integration stuff gets really interesting is the CD side of it. Um, 
showing you what the current status of things is, that kind of stuff. So let's say, again, you, you pushed a circle and then circle actually deployed for you. That deployment shows up nowhere in GitHub whatsoever. Um, there's at most, maybe there's a comment that shows up in somewhere, but there's zero information. When I look at a, a given project or a repo on GitHub, there's no way for me to tell what's in production, zero. Um, and frankly, looking at CircleCI, there's zero way to look. Look at Travis, there's zero way to do it. You have to look at more modern tools before you'd see that, like Distelli or maybe Codeship or some of these other guys that are DD companies and not just CI companies. Um, you'd have to look at one of those before they even provide this kind of comparable functionality. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, that does. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? I know that Amara had a few others, so yeah. I can. Hey, hey Mark, this is Mike. Can, yeah. can you hear me okay? Yep, I can. Cool. I'm using my monitor as a speaker, so I'm always wondering if it works. Uh, but uh, hey, this is really impressive. So from my experience, um, I haven't talked with as many customers as I've been here because I'm relatively new, but um, I talked to lots of customers at Sauce Labs, and they were in the same space and the thing. My takeaway from this um, uh, presentation is the whole the CD side. So um, most people that I've talked to in this space, uh, continuous deployment is kind of like a dream they have, right? I mean, it's, it, it's something that is something they, they're striving to achieve, but they really feel like there's no way to get there in the short term. You know, may, maybe people were, when I was talking to people at Sauce Labs, people were focused more on continuous delivery, which is one step before continuous deployment, right? Where people actually have a, like a manual check before they send stuff to production. So I guess my, my question for you is, it seems to me that continuous deployment is a huge differentiator for us. Like you just said, to really do this, you have to get other complex tools involved from a sales guy's perspective, especially when we're talking about prospecting into bigger accounts. This is a real, in my opinion, I may be wrong, a huge product differentiator for us. And we really need to be able to, I think, I need to have a better understanding of how how different this makes us, because I think it makes us substantially different. Because like I said, continuous deployment, everyone I talked to was like, hey, of course we want to get there, but of course we're not going to be able to get there. I mean, like Facebook, I think, does it. Um, Google does it. Yahoo maybe does it. But I mean, the number of people who actually do continuous deployment out in the real world right now is really small, as far as I know. And it, it's really exciting for me to see the word doing that. And I'm just wondering, I think we need to, we don't, we, we really, we shouldn't devalue that. I mean, I think it's a huge product differentiator for us. And I need to, I want to get a better understanding of how different that makes us in the marketplace. When I talk to customers and prospects, especially like, hey, why should you talk to me? Because of this, you know, are you guys doing this? Do you want to get to the continuous deployment? Well, why don't you come on over to GitLab and give us a try, you know? So anyway, that's just my two cents. So um, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, first off that either of the CDs, actually continuous deployment or continuous delivery, are often um, aspirational for a lot of companies. Um, you know, depending on what stage they're in, right? Uh, they might they might have some kind of automatic deployment, but I don't know, there's a certain, there's, there's a big leap you have to take. CI is one thing, you know, I mean, a health, if we, let's step back a little bit, right? An immature software team doesn't even bother with CI. And, it doesn't, and I'm not even saying that as like a, a really negative immature. I mean, when I joined Heroku, to be clear, five years ago, we did not do CI. Modern software development team doing amazing things did not do CI. So it's not that out of a stretch. Just so if you're only talking to enterprise customers, like if they're not using CI, like that's a totally normal thing for you know, for whatever for a lot of development teams. Yeah, I um, want I want to interject here. Um, GitLab five years ago was also not doing CI, so we're not throwing anybody <laughs> under the bus because this will be a public video in the end. So we don't want to say anything. Uh, we we want to keep it stick to products uh, and the differences <laughs> between them. Fair enough, fair enough. Get, um, so GitLab yeah, so, so, didn't exist also five years ago. <laughs> fair enough. But yeah, but CI is um, not something you start off right away. Right? When you're just trying to get something done, you do whatever to, you know, to get something done. Um, and for that matter, if you go back 10 or 20 years, CI wasn't really just picked up by anybody almost. So CD, I feel like really sort of started to come into its own a couple of years ago. The terms were defined a long time ago, but, um, but really it, it's been a couple of years when people started to realize that this is actually important. But one of the things you touched on was the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. And, um, and this is one of those annoying things that are just gonna frustrate a lot of folks because you, know, the, you use the same initials and most of the time people just talk about them in the same bucket. 
The main difference really is whether it's automatic or whether it's manual. Um, you know, and, and so you might have one where it's it's automatic up to a point. It, it's automatic up to the QA or automatic up to staging, but not to production. Like that still means you've got manual work there. The interesting difference though there is it's generally not a technical challenge to get, or well, not only a technical challenge, to get from making it manual to making it automatic. There it's more about trust and discipline and things like that. So you can have a team that, um, again, you know, you start adding CI to your system and then you get a little bit more confident. Okay, great, let's push this to staging automatically. But you're like, oh, no way, I'm pushing that to production. We still need humans to go through a QA cycle or we need product managers to validate that this looks right or I don't know what, like you've got a manual process. Usually that comes down to trust. Now you can use technology to help with that trust by running CI continuously, by making tests really great and easy, by making it super convenient to test everything. Like one of the things that happens with a large project is that tests actually take a long time. Tests can take hours to run. So one of the simplest things we do, of course, is let you run things in parallel, which then gets that time back a lot, much, much shorter. Um, ideally, you're aiming for something like five minutes. You know, if your tests take more than five minutes, then you're disrupting somebody's flow. So we can use technology to make that better so that people then write tests more fully and therefore cover more, you know, towards 100% of code coverage, which will give them more confidence in delivering automatically to production. But still, it takes the team's you know, maturity, ultimately, to decide to, yes, we're going to automatically deploy to production. Um, and even by a good example with GitLab, our about.gitlab.com automatically deploys to production every time you merge things into master. But we don't automatically deploy to GitLab.com you know, at all. In fact, that's a totally manual process at this point. Um, we don't do you know, the fullest of CD in that sense. Now, part of my charge is to make that happen, to get us to the point where that we can, um, but, but today that's not really true. Um, so anyway, so again, it's not strictly a technical thing. It is a maturity thing. Um, in case it helps, I'm going to drop one link in the chat. Uh, this was the first Google hit I found on the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Um, but basically, it's just what I said is, is whether there's a manual step there or not. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to bring up there, but did that uh, fully address whatever you were looking for, Mike? Yeah, 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 it did. I mean, I, I just think it's really cool, and I just don't want to, I, I just think it's a huge differentiator for us. When I heard, when I heard continuous deployment, like my ears perked up, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, because right, right. <laughs> I, I understand yeah. how, I understand the challenges companies have with that. So I think, I think it's awesome. So I just want to uh, just get a better understanding of, of it, and so I can position it correctly and, and, and value it correctly for, so people understand it, that's all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, for my own part, I, I really do believe in CD um, and seeing it in practice. I, I've seen what it change, how it changes the team and how you look at things when you know things go out there right away. Uh, it changes how quickly you get feedback from customers, all these other things that it enables. Um, so it's really, really fantastic. Um, one other piece I hesitate to even mention now, but is like review apps. In this particular demo configuration, I've set it up so that um, all merge requests get deployed to staging automatically, which is a great um, way to then be able to see those changes. And that means that before you even click merge, somebody can go and you know visually inspect the, the what changed. Um, there's a practical problem in doing that, which is that if you've got a bunch of different merge requests, then they're all competing and overwriting each other on staging. Um, and one answer to that is, this concept called review apps, which I really hope to you know bring quickly here, um, but it doesn't it doesn't exist as a thing today at GitLab. Um, but that's another really key piece to help you towards continuous deployment, um, because if you're really confident, like basically it's about confidence again. You want to know with all the confidence when you click accept merge request that it is going to do exactly what you think it's going to do, and then when you click accept, it just goes and ships out. And I think one of the impediments to being able to do that is traditionally you're looking at it and you're just going to see code and so you you know you can have all the confidence that you've reviewed the code that there's no you know nothing that violates your style guide or whatever like all these kinds of technical merits but it still might not do what you think it's going to do you're still trusting that the person who did the development did it and there still is this potential gap between 
what they interpreted as the goal of a, you know, an issue and what, say, the product manager or whoever created the issue believes the goal of that issue is. So sometimes after you click merge, you then see it in production. You're like, oh, well, that's not quite what I was expecting. And then you have to turn that into another iteration, which is still fine. It's still better because it's in production and then you can go and fix it and you can iterate. So I'm still a pro for that. But it's really great if you could actually be able to see the thing running before you even click on accept. And then when you click on accept, you have total confidence that, yeah, go ahead and ship it to production because I, I know exactly what this looks like. I know exactly what the ramifications are. We don't need to send it to a QA team. We've already you know, checked out everything. So I think that's another key piece to make full CD really, really work. Um, any other questions? There's a chat, let me just check. No, thanks, okay. Um, so I think, Amara, you had asked me a couple of questions before about prepping for this. Um, one of them was about, you know, why am I personally excited by all this? Um, and and I, I think it's because I feel like we're on this cusp of, of a change within modern software development. Um, CD itself is is already that, but but frankly, like, you know, the early adopters have already been doing that. And it's a really part of a, a mission to bring CD to the masses. And that's really, really important. But I also feel like we're, we're, we're pushing sort of the boundaries of that. Like all the things I just talked about, the review apps and stuff really um, are pushing not just the, the simplistic definition of CD, but bringing the tools together to make CD really work for you. Um, there's a few other things beyond CD, which I won't even get to right now, but I just really believe in this movement. Um, and I know, again, the, the personal impacts on development teams when they embrace these things and how much productivity improves, how quality improves, all this kind of stuff, um, and just happiness of the team improves. Uh, and so I'm like, on a personal mission to sort of bring that to, to the masses. And I really believe that GitLab is um, poised to deliver that in the best possible way. Um, I know we talk about it in our messaging, when we talk about integrated, um, and it's sometimes easy to just think like that's maybe just a buzzword or like, okay, it's, you know, yes, it's a slight advantage, but you know, what does it really, really mean? Um, but I think it's actually really, really key because it means that we can pull this stuff together beautifully. I already talked about one of my, my prime examples, which is like sort of the deployment status, like what's running in production. Um, one of the things that we are actually hoping to ship this release is being able to look at a merge request itself and say, okay, is this merge request in staging? Is it in production? Um, right now the deploys happen, but I can't tell at a glance. Um, as a product manager, this is incredibly valuable. I can't tell how many, how many times I've seen a merge request that's been merged, it's on some Trello board, and somebody says, okay, yeah, it's done. And then I go check production, and I'm like, wait, this feature isn't there. And like, oh, well, yeah, well, it's waiting for a deploy. And I'm like, well, when's that gonna happen? I have no visibility, like, it's now suddenly a black box. My tools failed me. It went for the point of saying, okay, yes, I've got this merge request, it's merged. Oh, it's out of the tool, you know, it's out of the SCM's responsibility, no idea what happened. As a product manager, that just kills me. Um, so I want to be able to look at this, this merge request and then say, okay, yes, it's been merged, but what happened after that? Is it in staging? Is it in production? Um, and then being able to see, okay, this is the current status. It is now in production. So we're going to be able to deliver that. And that's something that um, just nobody else is touching. Um, you know, Somebody else could, again, it, but it would take really deep integration between all these parts to understand what's been in production, what you know, code is where, whatever. But it's something that we can do because we have visibility into that entire spectrum. And that's what really makes me excited about GitLab's vision for CI CD. That level of integration can just make such a better experience for the development teams and, and the company as a whole. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it for me. Um, and then maybe stepping back a little bit um, from the idea to production piece, not only is it each individual piece is really, really deep, so the CD part's really, really deep, but we can cover this entire space. Um, you know, again, other companies can cover chunks of it. They can cover the CD part well, or they can cover you know various pieces well, but we can cover this whole thing, including from chat to creating an idea, turning it into an issue, discussing that issue, turning it into a merge request, discussing the code around the merge request, then putting it up to a review app, discussing how it looks, going back to the issue, but with, with real knowledge of what, this, what the change actually looks like, 
going ahead and now committing that and then having it go through the deployment pipeline and get pushed to staging, get pushed to production, and then ultimately later on being able to monitor that stuff in production and being able to see, oh, this change you pushed, maybe we accidentally pushed it to three machines out of a fleet of 100 and we're going to watch metrics on those three machines and then tell you that, oh, the error rate increased by 20% on those three machines. So this merge request that you merged a long time ago, actually, you might want to consider reverting that or you know, otherwise you know, fixing it or whatever. And so that's not even just idea to production, but that's beyond production. That's now saying, like taking responsibility for the whole value that we've delivered to the customer and not just even stopping at production. Um, so I think I'm really excited for that just breadth of things. So I think it'll just be transformative for the development teams. That's great, Mark. Thanks for thanks for answering and just like sharing like your thoughts on on everything that makes it so exciting. So one of the things that I'm curious about, and I think it sort of stems from the question that Mike asked around um, CD sort of being very aspirational. Um, I'm curious, like from your perspective, or really anyone on the call, like who would we point to to say like we keep talking about modern developers. And so I'm curious, like, who is that? Like, are we talking about ourselves in terms of like how we even build GitLab? Or is there some like Nirvana development team that we are looking, are, are mentioning when we say like, oh, modern developers, like so few people are truly achieving CD. Like who would we be looking at when we, when we, when we say modern developers? It's a hard thing to answer that without obviously potentially offending people who aren't in the modern developer bucket. Um, Let's just the praise I, the good ones. <laughs> exactly. The way I look at it personally, in my experience, um, starting my career 20 some odd years ago, um, software development kind of didn't change for a while. There was a big proliferation of languages and things, but software development was compiled code that you then shipped on disk to people. Um, you know, and so there were changes, you know, from C to Java to whatever, didn't change the fundamental way of doing development. It just changed the, the, some of the tooling or, you know, whatever. But then, you know, 10 years ago, let's say, um, web development changed a lot with SaaS type of things. You know, there was always web development 20 years ago, but SaaS really changed things a lot because now you're delivering products in, um, and you didn't, you weren't bundling it anymore. You were shipping it on services, right? Um, that was sort of this, this big generational shift. Um, I feel like then, I don't know if this is accurate anymore, maybe it's seven years ago or something, but then there was another generational shift uh, in my mind, kind of marked by Heroku and a few others um, that embraced you know, Ruby, um, Ruby on Rails really more specifically, and, um, and you know, CI and a few other things. And that became sort of another generational thing. At this point, that's not necessarily even modern. I mean, modern, depending on how you define it, could even include like all of the mobile stuff, right? That's a big piece of, of modern today. Um, for me, I think modern means things like, for better or for worse, for me, generally it means um, a scripted language like Ruby or, um, you know, uh, whatever, PHP or Python or something like that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily include PHP in the modern part, but, um, as opposed to a compiled language like a, a Java or something like that. Um, but then it does imply things like CI. It implies shipping faster in some way. Um, you know, that could still be a release train. It could be continuous. Um, truly modern, I would go more towards the continuous. I think that's what people are striving for. Um, you know, GitLab's great that we ship every month, but um, at some point, you know, maybe we'll actually ship far more often and then release every month, but but still ship more often or something along those lines. Um, but a lot of what you're looking for when you talk to the enterprises is, um, well, more and more, it's actually like sort of pockets of the enterprise where they have started to embrace these modern tools. Like Node is, is one of the things that, you know, they might have all this really old infrastructure for doing everything else, but then some group has picked up Node and it's made huge inroads into the enterprise. And suddenly they're just doing all these modern development practices and they're doing Again, the CI, um, they're deploying to SaaS products or, or internal versions of things. It's not necessarily um, a product that you sell or whatever, but it's something that's deployed on a website and you're deploying constantly. Um, and you know, I think 
heck was it said you blog post maybe recently or tweeted or something recently about like these major innovations that change the the time like how many times one of the key things was like how many times do you deploy a day and the velocity number like do you deploy once a year do you deploy once a month do you deploy once a day do you deploy a thousand times a day and you know modern is probably toward that latter part of the spectrum than the former part of the spectrum might be misrepresenting where that quote come from but um, but I think that's a big key is is how quick how often you deploy um, how often you you know ship it to actually customers and obviously Google and folks like that are, are you know known for this they ship because they got such a huge team of course they ship thousands of times a day um, but even you know within a large enterprise there will be pockets of you know lab versions of those enterprise companies and they will be deploying multiple times a day. Um, so anyway, not a really great definition of what modern means, um, but that's usually what I think of when I think of modern. That was helpful, Mark. I don't know if anyone has anything to add. Sid, I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, but that was helpful. <laughs> no, I have uh, nothing to add. I thought that was great. Thanks, uh, thanks Mark and Amara. Great. Um, awesome. If there are any other questions, whatever, obviously feel free to ping me, especially if you ever want to give the demo, you want more training one on one so that you can give the demo, that's great. Um, uh, or you know, follow up on issues or however else. There's lots of ways to, to follow up. Great. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. And like he said, definitely follow up with Mark or we'll leave the issue open. Um, just like I noted at the top of the call, um, we'll most likely circle back on this. Um, actually, definitely. Because um, I think, Mark, to your point, there's a lot of great conversation that certainly can be separate GLU sessions. And I know I have some ideas coming out of it. Um, just as a reminder for everyone, please feel free to request topics just in the GLU project um, or just like email me as well if you if you have anything that you're thinking of. Uh, thanks for joining. And the recording will be up on YouTube and in our um, GLU folder in a couple days. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.